praise for Remembrance Sunday. Good evening. Earlier today, the annual wreath-laying ceremony at the Cenotaph in Whitehall was watched by literally millions of people on television. And yet, many more people missed the event because they themselves, in towns and villages throughout Britain, were paying their own personal respects, not just to the whole idea of remembrance, not just to the nation's way of paying tribute to the millions of men and women who gave their lives in two world wars, but something more than that. The people who came here to this war memorial on a traffic island in the small mining town of Cannock in Staffordshire were doing precisely what other groups throughout the country were doing. They were remembering fathers, sons, brothers, sisters, friends who left to go to the war, never to return. And perhaps that's what Remembrance Sunday is really about. And it's with that thought in mind that we join the people of Cannock in their parish church of St. Luke for this their remembrance, songs of praise. Earlier this year, the events of 40 years ago were brought up to date when aircraft recovery groups found two crashed aircraft, one British and one German. The remains of the pilots were in each machine, Flight Lieutenant H.R.A. Beresford and Oberleutnant Eckhard Schelcher. Both men were buried with full military honours. Eckhard Schelcher here in the German military cemetery at Cannock Chase, alongside more than 5,000 German soldiers and airmen. Eckhard Schelcher's brother flew from his home in Germany to watch the honor guard from RAF Schaubery pay tribute to a dead enemy. I myself and my family, we are overwhelmed by this funeral. We are full of admiration to this country, which is doing honor to my brother especially as he came over to your country as an enemy. I think such a funeral is a very good thing to keep the remembrance to all those who lost their lives in the war. And likewise, it should be an impetus for making efforts for freedom between all nations. Reconciliation, one of the hardest of the Christian virtues. But if we can achieve it, then there's hope. And that must surely be a cause for rejoicing.
Harry Wollescroft was a navigator in the famous Royal Air Force Pathfinder Squadron. He was shot down at Nuremberg in 1944. I was uh, captured by a woodman and taken to a, a small village. And an old lady who owned the inn or house was uh, busying herself in the kitchen and two Hitler youth were guarding me. She ordered them out, then pushed a bowl of soup into my hand and pointed to a photograph of her son, I presume, who was a prisoner, she said, in England. I shall remember that moment for the rest of my life because uh, when I came back to England, um, at camp, the prison camp, which is about two miles over the trees from here, there were some German prisoners. Mm. And uh, I went to the commandant of the camp and told him this story and asked whether I could have two or three prisoners for Christmas dinner. One of the people that came was a man named Bretzner, and Willie Bretzner has become one of the greatest and closest friends I shall ever have. Uh, recently, I went to visit him, and uh, uh, I was complaining to him that he wouldn't let me pay for anything. And he said, you come with me, and he took me to the basement of his home. And he said, you say you are embarrassed because you can't, cannot pay for anything. I will show you what embarrassment is. And he opened some sliding doors, and he kept, almost as a shrine, clothing which we had sent to him, my wife and I and my mother had sent to him when he was in dire straits in, after going back from this country. Now, you've chosen the hymn, Abide With Me. And that's one that's often chosen on this program, and usually for fairly conventional reasons, but uh, yours are rather less so. Yes, we were in a particularly miserable state in the prisoner of war camp, mm. and uh, we'd had our one set of cricket equipment taken away from us. We'd had our bed boards taken away from us. We'd had our straw palliasses taken away. And uh, somebody started to hum abide with me. And uh, eventually the whole 66 of us in that hut took up the song. And it's, um, I don't suppose there was a dry eye there at all. I know mine weren't. Joan Whitehouse helped establish the Cannock branch of the Women's Voluntary Services. Did you have any difficulty finding recruits? Oh, no. No, no they came from the old and the young. Girls gave up the holidays and things. 
people were marvellous. What about equipment? Well, we, we hardly had any to start with. We, we, we were given a little money and we bought an old Humber, uh, rather decrepit, and that was the start. Then uh, we saved, had different all things to get money, and uh, a WVS mobile canteen was bought. The first real operation was uh, Coventry, and I think you know, that was very bad. When we got there, uh, the fires were still burning, there was smoke everywhere, and, hose pipes, which is a terrible scene. But the people in Coventry were marvellous. I can't speak highly enough. I think with our cups of tea and sandwiches, we were able to uplift the people a little bit, and they seemed to appreciate them. What hymn have you chosen? When morning gills the skies. And why have you chosen that one? I chose it because the first time I heard it was at my cousin's funeral which although it was rather a sad occasion, it brought back so many memories of when we'd been together during the war and the kindness of people in those during the trying times, uh, wanting to help one another, wanting to give, not to take so much as to give. And it brought back those memories that you made you feel that you wanted to sing for joy. Cannock has strong links with Britain's military past. Cannock Chase Country Park has housed a recruit training camp, a prisoner of war camp, and an RAF camp. It now houses a German military cemetery and this Commonwealth cemetery, and recently a memorial to over 14,000 Polish officers who died in Katyn Forest during the last war was unveiled here. Retired miner Stanislaw Siska and his wife met in a displaced persons camp in England. Together with other Polish exiles, they helped build the memorial. At the unveiling, a Polish choir sang the Polish national anthem and the hymn, Jerusalem. I chose the Jerusalem hymn because, firstly, it has been sung during unveiling this memory. But this hymn, for us, is something more than that. Because after the war, when the war finished, we have nowhere to go. But we come to this country and we settle here, we build our homes, and we are happy. That's why I chose the Jerusalem and
Jim Layton was a sergeant in the Territorial Army Royal Engineers. Together with 150 friends, he left for war from this drill hall. Many of them never returned. For many years after the war, I found it extremely difficult to uh, contemplate parading on Armistice Sunday. So I was thinking that uh, what, what a Remembrance Day service did was, was to remember war, you know, was in some ways uh, glorifying war. But then I began to realize that uh, that was not doing justice to the men, the young men particularly who'd, who died, some of whom had died in order that I might uh, escape because they were unselfish, because they gave, gave before they'd lived. And I think the duty is ours to respect that and to keep alive their memory, not only for their sakes, but for ours as well. Well, when you look around, when I see the chaps here now, you know, and I realize so many of those fellas who were with us, so young, so full of vitality, full of fun, a lot of them with skills, never reaching their potential at all. Uh, and as I lay in hospital bed, I began to realize that so many young people, not only in wartime, but even in peacetime, never reach their potential at all. Uh, they don't get the chance to achieve they're dead before they've lived. Uh, and it was through that sort of experience that made me decide to go into youth work. I think much of what I, what I feel about that's summed up in uh, what I think is the remembrance hymn, and that's uh, O Valiant Hearts. Uh, particularly the, the words that demand of us, I think, a covenant that we hallow the memory of those who gave their lives in uh, the war. David Owen is one of many young people from all over Staffordshire who take part in a scheme with German students. They help maintain military graves in each other's countries. Well, at first we walked through the gates and we didn't realize exactly what it was going to be like. And when we went through, we realized, you know, there are thousands of graves there. And you think, oh, if you add all these graves up, 
plus all the hundreds in the other cemeteries all around Europe, it brings back the feeling of how terrible the war was, how these young people had been killed and that nothing much had been gained by it. And then you begin to build up hope that the war graves would be able to show this to other people throughout Europe to prevent another such catastrophe occurring. You could work at the graves and you looked at each of the gravestones and you think, you know, this lad was only 18. You know, why did he, why did he have to die? Now, what you've chosen isn't commonly regarded as a hymn at all, is it? We had uh, songs around the campfire some nights, and they were really nice songs. They were all about peace, and they were from they were German and English songs, and a few Norwegian ones. And included in these was Where Have All the Flowers Gone, which I like very much. And why do you like that one particularly? It's apt for the war graves. You know, the song starts off about where have all the flowers and on the graves, and or that all the young lads have gone to the war and they've been killed. And you think, well, it's just like here in this cemetery, you know, a waste of young people's lives, because nobody learns from the war much. It happens again and again. And I think that people should learn that nothing can be gained by war, only a huge loss, a tremendous loss of people's lives. John Linford is rector of Cannock. I was only a boy during the war, 
But I remember distinctly the intense hatred with which we were expected to think of the Germans. The joy we felt when any of them were killed, the exultation when they were defeated. They were the enemy, and we were encouraged to hate them. But as we find ourselves in this German war cemetery, surrounded as we are by the graves of over 5,000 German young men, that feeling of hatred and enmity seems quite out of place, shameful even even grotesque, because these young men shared the same human experience that ours knew. They left home to fight in a war they did not choose, just as ours did. They suffered and died in a war, just as ours did. Their people at home heard the news of their death with the same agony and heartbreak. They shared the same suffering, they shared the same death, they shared the same ghastly human experience. So how could we possibly hate them? And yet hatred and enmity are the bitter fruits of war. The real enemy in war is not the Germans or the Japanese or the Russians. The real enemy is war itself. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have this day recalled the sacrifice made by others in the cause of freedom and justice. Forgive us wherein we have failed them and increase within us all a new determination to seek those things that make for peace and for the happiness of all mankind. Comfort those to whom this day has brought poignant memories of lost loved ones, and grant us the faith that embraces the promise of life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of all consolation, who in the resurrection of his only Son gave to all men the hope of rising again, fill you with his blessing, May he grant to the living forgiveness of sin and to the dead a resting place of light and peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.